Welcome to Productive Discourse. Productive Discourse is a place where we talk about the positive interactions that take place within our community. In other words, we're constantly searching for our shining needle of common ground in that haystack of fear. For the last few weeks, we've been celebrating the summer, talking about baseball, particularly Alameda Park Lake baseball. Today, we're going to talk about the women leadership of the Alameda Parks and Recreation Department. And I'm pleased to have as guests, Adrian Shakes Alexander, Cindy LaCroix, Denise Ratto, and Carrie Spaulding. All of them were strong leaders in the Alameda Parks. Adrian, Cindy, Denise, and Carrie, welcome to Productive Discourse. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Steve. We're pleased to have you. Uh, and as we get started, the first thing I'd like to ask is how you're doing. It's been a crazy year and a half. Um, what are you doing to be happy and healthy during these crazy times? And I'll start with Adrian. Well, I have to say I'm very grateful that I'm a retired school teacher, so I did not have to deal with Zoom the last year and a half. Um, that's one thing I'm thankful for. Um, my husband and I pretty much stayed home. We did errands for my 94-year-old mother, um, stayed safe. I baked more than I baked in my life, but I have a lot of kids in the neighborhood, so every Wednesday they got recess treats. So uh, that was a fun thing to do. Um, and just, you know, just trying to stay safe and stay home and do a, did a lot of cleaning, did a mm -hmm. lot of cleaning and, you know. Finding ways to keep busy. Yes. How about you, Cindy? Well, I've been fortunate that I'm staying with a friend or else I would have been uh, in lockdown um, quietly by myself. Okay. And um, I'm out here on Harbor Bay, so we've been walking every day, and I've been very fortunate that um, it's really easy to walk and beautiful to walk on, on Harbor Bay Isle. Um, right. I've been carefully babysitting my four-year-old grandson, and that's been going well. Um, I was vaccinated early in January, so I felt pretty safe um, by March, which is neat. Um, my vacation, um, first vacation in a long time, was canceled in May of 20 um, because of the COVID virus. So I'm looking forward to that taking place in September. Great, great. Uh, well, that's here. exciting. And I just came back, I just came back from Disneyland when it was still at 25 percent. So okay. I had a great, I had a great time down there. So Disneyland was short lines. Disneyland that, with short lines, yes. And I got into Star Wars. We were very lucky. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Uh, how are you doing, Denise? I'm doing well. Um, like Adrian, I'm a retired school teacher, so I didn't have to deal with Zoom. And I'm very grateful for that. Um, same thing, trying to stay healthy. Um, started riding my bike around Alameda. Um, it's nice. It's flat. I even saw Cindy out on Harbor Bay um, riding my bike, um, working in the garden. Um, I started volunteering at the Alameda Food Bank at the beginning of the pandemic and continued to do so. So, but I've stayed safe. My family has been safe. And like Cindy, I was very fortunate. I was vaccinated in January. Very good. Very good. How are you doing, Carrie? I'm doing okay, uh, staying safe. We're stayed home a lot. Uh, my husband, Brian McDonald, and I did a lot of things around the house. Um, I'm also a retired school teacher and administrator, so I was fortunate not to have to deal with Zoom either. Uh, I did a lot of pickling. I pickled all kinds of vegetables, and that oh. was kind of a fun thing to do and taking care of our two St. Bernards and our two new kittens and other cat and our porch cat. So that keeps me busy. That's good. That's good. You know, it, it's interesting. I talked with Sam Spear last week and one of the things he said about the park leadership, a lot of park directors took their experience as college students when they were working in the parks into a career in teaching. And it sounds like, uh, Several of you did that. So that, and then I, my, my director was Barry Weiss and he did the same thing. So 
it, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's interesting how that worked out. So you, you all had a time and leadership in the parks, but what were you act, your activities as kids before you got into leadership? What did you do in the parks and which park was your home park, Adrian? Well, I lived near Franklin Park. However, I was not a park kid. My brother, Dan, and my sister, Michelle, were both park kids. Okay. We lived down right by Frank Whedon's pool. So I was in Frank Whedon's pool as a young kid all the time and swimming at Franklin Pool. I did not participate in sports at Franklin, even though Patrick Rusty calls me a Franklin Eagle. I am a cruisy cold. Oh, okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing we all have our identity to a park. Yeah, I've got, you know, my, I, like I said, my brother and sister were the sports kids. I was not. So, right, right. Uh, Cindy, uh, what activities did you do when you were growing up? Oh, I was definitely a park kid. I was a Franklin Eagle. I lived on Grand in San Jose. So, we would walk a block to the park. Um, and I have some really nice memories from Franklin. Um, Bob and at that time, Sydney, forget her last name. Anyway, we're park directors, they're now married. Um, I caught them making a little kiss in the back room once when I was young. <laughs> and um, one really, really favorite memory is, I think I was 10, but Bob Howard taught me how to score baseball. And I'd sit on the bench over on the San Jose side and, and score the games for him at Franklin Park. And that's an awesome memory for a young girl who ended up using that with um, girls softball with my park career. Um, and I also swam at Franklin Pool. I was one of Frank Whedon's um, five-year-olds in 1955 that started that um, program before Franklin Pool was even built. But um, yeah, being a park kid all day long and all day night. As a teenager, we hung out there. People would um, stand on, on the fence and there was a beautiful trapeze at that time. And they'd stand on the fence and people would throw the trapeze hard so they could jump on the trapeze from the fence. Not a kosher thing to do. Um, they've gotten rid of the dangerous merry-go-rounds and the two tall slides and the, and the two tall swings these days. But we had all those at Franklin Park in the 50s and 60s. It's very nice. All those dangerous things. You remember the train at Washington Park? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. that, that was like the greatest thing in the world. And we'd climb all over it. And I never heard of anybody falling off. Um, but I don't think that would fly today. <laughs> well, people play tag on there. And it was a while, I think, before they put the small gating fence around that, too, that, mm -hmm. that made it a little bit safer on the sides. Right. Right. So, uh, Denise, were you a park kid? Oh, I was. I was a cruising park kid. All right. Um, I spent many hours a day there, get there at 10, leave at 6 when my mom would call the park and ask the park director to send me home because dinner was on the table. All right. And if I didn't get home, she was putting it away. Um, <laughs> yep, I lived at Cruzy Park. Um Actually playing softball, I hurt my arm. And when my dad had to pick me up from the hospital, it wasn't anything serious. But my dad said, I have three kids. I have one son who has the size, but not the desire. I've got a son who's got this desire, but not the size. But I'm picking up my daughter from the hospital with a sports injury. <laughs> so, great memories. And Cindy was actually my park director at Cruzy Park. All right, fantastic, fantastic. Did you ever ride your bike in the park when Cindy was directing? Ooh. Not near the office. <laughs> okay. Good <laughs> answer. We got to the tiny top park. That's when we'd get on our bikes and ride. <laughs> but of, never by the office. Out of eyesight, all right. Yes. Uh, how about you, Carrie? Were you a park kid? Well, I grew up a little bit differently because my mother, Audrey Spaulding, was a park director mm -hmm. and she was at Washington Park for several years and then she worked at a lot of different parks. Uh, one thing was my mom was a great professional softball pitcher and I did not inherit that ability. 
However, every park director that had me on a softball team thought I should be the pitcher, and that was just not a really good idea. I was a swimmer, so I spent most of my time at Franklin Pool, but I would, I would call Washington my home park. Um, and a great story about the train, my mother was working at Washington Park, and there were several areas of the train that said, do not climb here. Well, my brother was climbing everywhere and he did fall off the train while my mother was working as park director. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> so how do you do? Oh, he broke a bone. I don't remember which one, but he did break something. But my mother was more mad because he was her son climbing where he shouldn't have been climbing. Right, right. So, that, that, that's the way it goes. That's the way it goes. Yeah. So you had your activities as kids, and then you became park directors or in some other way worked for the Recreation and Park Department. Adrian, I think uh, you worked at Cruzy Park? I did. I, uh, yeah. I started out as an umpire. Um, the summer I graduated from high school, summer of 72, B. Rowney hired me to be a softball umpire. Have you no know, real sports experience? That was certainly a um, an adventure. Um, after that, I was hired by I was placed at Cruzy Park with Jim Sullivan by Jim Richards, and so my career started out in September of '72 at Cruzy Park. Okay. My first day there, young naive, have no idea what I'm doing. Three of the boys locked me in the office on the first day. <laughs> Peter Brack, Gary Birdie, and Peter Michaelettos. And to this day, they are all very good friends of mine. It's a great story. Um, I have to thank Jim Sullivan for teaching me what to do at that park and how to get in what to do. Um, I had a great time. My junior uh, girl softball team won the championship one year with no help from me. The girls, the Robin Niederbrack and Debbie Trevelyan and Lisa Ciccone, um, all had brothers who played and they watched their brothers play and they knew what to do. And mm -hmm. I beat Sue Samoda. We had a tie game going into the ninth inning and my girls won that game. So that's a, my fondest memory of the, that park was winning that championship with them. All and right. I said, in knowing that those kids are still all very good friends of mine today. Mm -hmm. Oh, great, great. That's, that's the thing, we built a lot of relationships. Uh, Denise, uh, what did you do in the park department? Um, started as an umpire as well. Uh, park uh, was a park director at Cruzy, and then I did camp. I did the day camp program um, under Sandy Souza. Mm -hmm. That's so, great. Um, um, I had played softball at Cruzy, so um, I'm not going to say coaching was easy. I think umpiring was harder. Um, because not only did I umpire softball, but I also umpired baseball. And that was kind of unheard of at that time. And I dealt with a lot of parents, mostly males, who said I shouldn't be there. Mm. And I told them, well, then they don't get to stay in the park. I only kicked one guy out of the park, though. But that was under Lil Arna Rich. So, right. long time ago. Long time ago. Uh, <laughs> Now, Cindy, you worked at Cruzy and Longfellow, right? Oh, I worked all over, but mostly Cruzy and Longfellow. Those are my longer term assignments. Oh, okay. I was at Edison School. I was at Lincoln. I was at McKinley Park. Um, McKinley was my first park, and there was an older woman named Marion Beakey there. Yeah. She had a tradition of um, um, throwing a Thanksgiving luncheon for the kids. Oh, um, and um, we continued that tradition Her uh, when I took over and invited her down. I have a picture of her somewhere with a corsage on. She was our guest of honor. Oh, um, wow. Um, nice. Yes, yeah, Barza family and um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark Trujillo were, were um, names I remember from, from McKinley Park. Mm -hmm. um, Cruzy Park, I was uh, very fortunate to have as my coworker, Barry Weiss. And my right. girlfriend who came to visit one day ended up becoming his wife. Wow. That's, that's, a real, that's a real proud moment for me. And she's heard it too many times. If she sees it, she'll roll her eyes, but that's okay. <laughs> right. um, yeah. But Longfellow, I was there seven years. It was a very, very special place. Um, Canelan family, um, the Roth family, Legdemans, 
uh, the Manabusins, a, a lot of a lot of Alameda families that um, kids ended up working for the parks also. I know Eddie Canelan and Dale Roth um, did a lot of artistic stuff then, and they both turned into graphic designers. Oh wow! So it all started at Longfellow. <laughs> And uh, Ed, I know Ed Canelan started that. He, he designed a, um, a game called Hub Toe that was played. I forget the name of the um, small small game with the nets and that, that was a tabletop game. Carom. Carom. He, he designed Hub Toe, which, is, which was a, um, had different rules than Carom. And I still have my Hub Toe car, card at home. <laughs> <laughs> and Mrs. Canelan taught me how to make Lumpia Shanghai at her house. Oh wow! I'm forever grateful for that. Yeah. Now there's a lifelong skill. That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's one of the themes that's come out of all these conversations I've had is when we were kids, we invented our own games, and yes, it it it, it, it was a unique skill that I don't know if the kids today have, but uh, we we came up with a lot of ideas at the park and we collaborated on a lot of things. Uh, Carrie, uh, what were you involved with when you were working with the Park and Recreation Department? Well, I started out when I was in high school. Miss Rowney hired me to be an arts and crafts specialist. So I went from park to park every week doing a different craft. And I did that for two summers. And then I was park director at Rittler for one year and McKinley for one year. And my memory of Rittler Park was the craziest idea I ever had, but I was young. We did an overnight sleepover where we took the kids ice skating at Southland, then to Farrell's, then we came back to Godfrey Park where I cooked spaghetti, then Joey <laughs> Russi did a magic show, then they spent the night, and then I made pancakes the next day. I don't know how I survived all of that, but oh, wow. the kids had it was really fun. Um, I worked there with Bob Machen and Steve mm -hmm. Cressy. And then I went to McKinley where I worked with Bob Ratto. And uh, I remember the Aspars as well. Uh, and we still did the Thanksgiving lunch. Uh, I, that was 1976, I guess. And then after that, I worked for my dad for a year or two and then I went to the swim center and I was at Alameda Swim Center now known as Emma Hood Swim Center mm -hmm. and I worked there for probably 20 years it was my oh. summer job loved it great great my next question was going to be about a typical day for a park director but it sounds like there wasn't really a typical day it could be almost anything uh, yeah do do any of you have any other good stories uh like what Carrie was talking about, the uh, cooking spaghetti and then making pancakes in the morning. Cindy? Um, there weren't any teen activities when I was a park director at Longfellow, and you'd never get away with this nowadays. But um, I would open up the park for free in the evening, and we'd have a little dance. Um, and the kids would bring um, food that they made from home, so we'd have a little potluck. And soon after that, when the rec department got wind, wind of that, they um, started the um, teen dance, dancing again at Lincoln, not at Longfellow. Huh. Um, we had an incident with some kids coming in from Union City and wanting to pick a fight when we had one of those um, events. And mm. Mrs. Manabusen came over and I felt like I was in the middle of West Side Story. I used, I used to check nunchucks in the building before the dance and, and lock them in the office. Oh, boy. So, but, and uh, um, the other thing we did um, as park directors, then the kids would go on field trips. And mm -hmm. twice I went with, with the park kids when the recreation department borrowed, borrowed the um, Boys and Girls Club Bluebird bus. And we went to um, Disneyland with a busload of kids. Oh, oh wow. And we also went to Santa's Village, which is no longer there, and Frontier Village, which is no longer there. And um, at Redwood City, I forget the name. Um, what, what's the um, place where, where the sea life is in Vallejo right uh, now? Was that uh, Marine? Six Flags. Six Flags. Oh, Marine Village. Marine World. 
Marine World. Marine used to World. Be Marine over World. In Redwood City. So we'd we'd go to Marine World mm -hmm. in Redwood City before it moved to Vallejo. Right. That's how old I am. <laughs> well, there was a little bit of everything going on. I remember that every year we'd go out to Candlestick Park in an afternoon, and there'd be a giant <laughs> game, and uh, that that was just great fun to get on the bus with about forty kids and just go out there and have a great day at the ballpark. Uh, some oh, of yeah. you talked. Some of you talked about some of the memorable kids, like the Cantalans and some of the other ones. Are there any other kids you came in contact with that either helped you with leadership or were memorable? Well, I, I can say at uh, Ritler Park, I had all the Russies, and Patrick was one of my little kids that played football. I'm sorry, oh. kickball. And he still tells that story playing kickball when he has uh, training for the new park leaders. And I remember him when he was just a little boy and all the resties were at, uh, at Rittler Park. So I really remember that family and the parents were always super supportive and helpful. Yeah, yeah. Are, are there any other I kids? I, I can say at Cruzy that we always had kids there, the boys, the girls. And one of the things was that they didn't care whether I was doing a craft project or whether Jim Sullivan was doing one, the kids were there. They came, they were there at 10 o'clock when we got there and they stayed till six o'clock when we left. They would go home and get us lunch. I remember um, Gary Birdie telling his mom, be sure you have the right kind of lunch meat at home for the sandwich for the directors. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the parents knew where the kids were. If they wanted the kids, they would call us so we could give them a message. That's mm -hmm. right. As far as riding the bike, they knew not to ride their bike in the park while we were there. <laughs> they knew not to do that. Um, and they respected us, you know, and I was young. I was 18, 19 years old. And some of these kids weren't much younger than me yeah. at the time. Now it's different. It's, you know, we're all the same age. Mm -hmm. But the, I think they all had respect for us. And we told them to get down off the tree or get off the building. They did. Right. Yeah. They knew what their yeah. limits were. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we had the Trenos, the Chaconis, the Rattos, and the Rattos, and, and the uh, Rattos, and the Rattos, <laughs> Rattos, and the Rattos. And one of the things from Cruz I have to be sure that I share is that. The Rattle Boys and Tony Carica and several of those kids have played football yes. every Thanksgiving morning for almost 30 years. They come down at 8.30 in the morning. They have their football game. There are some of their kids are playing out. I think there's even a few grandkids playing. It's called the Generation Bowl, and they've done it every year except during COVID. Mm -hmm. And right. it didn't matter where they had to be for Thanksgiving dinner. They showed up for the game and then they left. I think that's really a real true Alameda story that mm -hmm. people don't know. I know other parks do the same thing, but it's pretty special. They have a dinner right. the night before that. Bill Kamisha and Donnie Ratto and Steve Ratto cook. Um, girls were not allowed till about the wow. 25th anniversary. And I said, well, <laughs> wait a minute. So I got to go and now every year I get invited back and the girls can come. So <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Special, special memory there, I think. I was right. definitely going to say about Cruzy Park, the Rattos and the Rattos, and I enjoyed coaching Denise. We had a pretty good team there, too. And Mike and, and little Rob Cooper were my park kids, and Mrs. Cooper was really helpful. Yeah. 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 Well, it's yeah, funny it's with the time. relationships because Rob's brother, Mike, uh, was kind of in my peer group when I was at Cruzy, mm -hmm. and then maybe 30 or 40 years after the fact, he hired my son, Phil, as a chef at the 1400. So it was, oh, yeah. it, it, it's just pretty cool about the relationships of friendships. In fact, I saw him today at Trader Joe's, but uh, these friendships go on for decades. So it, it's it fantastic. Is. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, what are the big topics of conversation right now with child raising is, interactions with parents. Uh, there were phone calls, you know, when kids have to come up, come home for dinner or something like that. What interactions did all of you have with parents when you were park directors? Um, I, I, guess, I don't remember anything difficult or challenging with the parents. They were really supportive, cooperative. Um, 
You know, we'd call and say so-and-so did something at the park or, you know, he can't come back tomorrow. And they were all really understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and usually, you know, a, a situation with a parent would stick in my mind and nothing does. I thought right. they were all really, really great. Um, and at the time we were park directors, you know, like you were saying, we were there at 10 in the morning. I mean, and our parents knew we were safe. We were free babysitters. And right. I was raised by a free babysitter in Cindy. Um, <laughs> you know, um, but I never had any difficulties with parents. I, I feel the same way. Yeah. But I, the moms were home and they, they really never came down to the park. They let their kids free range. It was, it felt safe. Mm -hmm. It was, it was my second home growing up. I never saw my mom come over to the park to get me. Mm -hmm. um, and at, same with Cruzy, same with, with Longfellow, same with McKinley. Um, the, the regular park kids lived there and it just felt like such a wonderful family. I mean, it wasn't the best paying job in the world, but it's some of my fondest memories. Right, right. Yeah. It you know, seemed like- parents, when they, you know, The parents were there for a baseball game or that. Mm -hmm. there, were, there was never a problem. Nobody was yelling at their kid mm -hmm. to catch the ball, do this, stand here, mm -hmm. get back, or argue to call. They didn't do that. And right. I think one of the great things that ARPD did was at the end of the summer, we had a family night. It was an awards dinner. Each park had one. And so the moms and dads and the kids came. We had a big picnic or a barbecue. Um, Sam Spear always sent an Oakland A or a San Francisco giant to come to those events. And they were some of the best times. It was the end of summer party. Kids got their awards. Um, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful connection we had, I think, with the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. It, 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 and I, as a park was, kid, I even participated in the girls' softball league. That's when I got my A2000 glove. My A2000. son used that glove. My son used that same glove after it was restrung, restrung when he went to Iraq, and he oh. owns it now. And and I'm hoping my grandson will also use that glove. But Fantastic. we played for a team called the Pink Elephants, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> There, there was a woman in Alameda. She was on a Mormon mission. Her name was Marsha Watts, and she coached us at McKinley in the afternoon. Um, my team played estuary under the lights. Audrey Spalding and Doris Sullivan were our umpires, and it was a little contentious evening. The police had to come. Oh. But um, my, team, my team won, and the um, girls that ran into base um, like this, I was the first base person. I was told never to drop a ball. And I fell down three times, but I never dropped that ball. They were always out. All right. Karen <laughs> <laughs> Barley was shortstop, and we're still friends today. So yeah. fun times. All right. Uh, there'd be, if you get a bunch of kids together, there'd be <laughs> disputes uh, on whatever. And the parents weren't there. How did the kids or the park directors settle, settle the, the disputes? Was there any common theme? I don't remember any disputes except <laughs> one with a couple of younger kids at, at um, Longfellow. And Gabe Ponce went mm -hmm. over and talked to them. He was a couple years older and he was a regular park kid. And he just handled it and said, we don't behave like that here. Oh, and that was the end that of it. That was pretty cool. Right, right. So policing their own. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So any other stories about disputes or misunderstandings? All right. Well, this has been fun. And there's just so many stories and we've covered so many of them. What is next on your bucket list? I'd love to hear your future plans or what you're doing right now that you're excited about. Adrian? Uh, well, we booked four different cruises for next year. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, we had a, a few of them canceled for this year. So we, we booked them. And I'll tell you, if you want to go somewhere, you better book it now because you can't get what you want. Right. So thank God I have more than one credit card so I can spread out these uh, <laughs> deposits on more than one credit card. Um, so we're doing that. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to, as, as you know, um, 
I am the chair of the Alameda Recreation and Park Commission. Mm -hmm. And who would have thought that this shy 18 year old girl that walked into Cruzy Park with no sports experience became a teacher, used baseball every Wednesday to teach with, yeah, and yeah. Um, got to throw out the first pitch at the Oakland Ace game twice, and wow. is now the chair of the Rec Commission. Who would ever thought that? So um, I'm pretty proud of that. And I work with um, uh, Kevin Kearney and Eric Cross and Kevin Kennedy and a few others to bring back the T-shirt league to the park through the kids a few years ago. With Ken Robles' help, we had a huge fundraiser. And due to COVID, that's kind of been nixed the last two years. So I am really looking forward to next spring to really try to get that back up and running. That was a free program for kids that they didn't have to pay to play baseball at the park. So I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting that back to the way it, to the way, it'll never be like it was. It'll never be play ball with Sam Spear as an umpire and all that. It won't be the same, but to give those kids an experience to be able to play. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. Sounds good. What's next for you, Cindy? Um, um, I'm, I'm enjoying tremendously the opportunities when I get to see my grandkid, usually once or twice a week. Um, like I mentioned, um, Hawaii's on my bucket list. That's happening. I decided after I retired eight years ago that um, I either wanted to write or do art. So I've been... I've taken some classes in art and I do some online stuff. I had a show with a couple of friends over in, the, in Redwood City. And um, I just still do a lot of volunteer work with Alameda Backyard Growers and the Frank Bett Center. Um, mm -hmm. Frank Bett has a plein air show the first week of August every year where 40 people, um, juried selection from throughout the United States come and paint for a week. And their shows, um, that following Saturday, I think it's August 7th this year at South Shore. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you stay connected to a lot of people. I learned that volunteerism from my family growing up. So it's, uh, it, it, it steads you well to have a life after retirement. Enjoying myself healthy, happy to be and blessed to be healthy. Fantastic. How about you, Denise? What are your plans moving forward? Um, well, my husband and I, and my husband who I met working for as a park director, <laughs> Lester Mina was at Washington Park. Um, we had those Friday staff meetings. Do you remember those? Yeah. And um, he didn't know who I was. He didn't know my first name. He just knew I was Ratto. So he was just, <laughs> yeah, hey, Ratto, how are you? So many years later, we met, fell in love, and got married. And he and I are trying to see a baseball game in every park in the country. So Good. we have done the West Coast. Um, next summer, we're hoping to do some of the East Coast with Toronto, Boston, and New York. Um, it'll take us a few summers, but that's okay. So that. That's pretty much, and Hawaii, Hawaii in December, because now it's crazy to go there now. And, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's so wild it. right now. Hopefully December, it'll be settled down a little bit. And it'll, I hope okay. so. Right, right. How about you, Carrie? Well, actually, my husband and I have booked a trip to go to Hawaii next month and we've got it all taken care of and booked and we will be nice. seeing one of my park kids, Jeff O from Rittler who lives in Hawaii. So that'll be great to see him. He has come here to visit our home tiki bar and we're gonna go see his stomping grounds. And then I'm going to Greece in September. Um, looking forward to that. Uh, I keep busy. I volunteer at St. Vincent de Paul serving food, but that's kind of been on hold with the COVID and I'm mm -hmm. going to contact them so I can get back into that. I really, that was super rewarding and I really mm -hmm. like doing that. Um, just keeping busy around here and I'll probably pickle a few more things. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that, that's fantastic. Well, thank you all for being on the show today. Pardon me? I want to say thank, 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 thank you, Adrian, for... Um, being the head of the Rec Commission now, we're really proud of her. She's so involved and so committed. Um, she's she served the um, Rec Department well. Thank you. I appreciate yes. that. I think it's really important that someone who grew up in the parks is on that commission. Absolutely. 
You know, yep. it, it really makes a difference because people today don't know what it was like then. It can never go mm -hmm. back to that exactly, but I think that history is important. And just for the record, I sort of met my husband at the Friday morning staff meeting. That's the story <laughs> that I'll tell. It's not recorded, um, but there are very, there's a lot of people in this town who met their their spouse at the rec department. That could be another whole show, Steve. <laughs> well, we're Rude. gonna do another series. <laughs> there you go. Love in the parks. There you yeah. go. I really appreciate yeah. having having the ladies on because there's a rich history of that. You know, B. Rowney as one of the recreation supervisors, that was unheard of in her day. That yes. was not, you know, something that was popular. So I really appreciate that. And now having Amy Woolridge as the, the Grant Maitland of ARPD. I think mm -hmm. it's important. It's important to our history. Well, as you said with B, but there was also Audrey Spaulding, there was Doris Sullivan. Um, and Doris, I'm not sure, was she ever at Cruzy? For some reason, I sort she of remember. Mostly at God. Her son was. She, she was at okay. Franklin when I was little for a while. There was that tiny little shack right off the ball field. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And Audrey would come down and do little crafts there for us. Um, yeah, fun, fun stuff. Doris and Audrey both came through Franklin Park at different times, maybe as substitutes, but I remember mm -hmm. Doris when I was young. And I don't think anybody can forget Audrey and Jennifer Elders. Not at all. No. Audrey was at Washington Park and Jennifer, Jennifer Cabral um, was a park director. And, you know, we have a rich Hawaiian heritage in Alameda. Yeah. And, yes. Um, um, we had a lot of Hawaiian dancing and we had the outrigger canoes and um, the Elderts family was uh, quite a family. Yeah, yep, <laughs> yeah. Yep, yeah. 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 that's for well, sure. I did four episodes on Park League Baseball before this one. And each episode, the guys I interviewed mentioned women leaders. And they're just... You can't do a series on the Alameda Park Re and Recreation Department without talking about talking to the women leaders. So uh, I appreciate all of you just participating in this because it's a real important part of the culture. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Very and nice. I, all, I also thank everyone for listening and watching today. We're going to do this every week. We'll have another episode next week on Park League Baseball and the Alameda Recreation Department. Now, to find out more about what we're doing, our website is productivediscourse.home.blog. That's where you can find out exactly what we're doing and where you can reach me. If you'd like me to speak at your service club, community organization, or religious group. Next week will be our next episode. But in the meantime, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. So this message can go far and wide, and we'll find that shining needle of common ground in that haystack of fear.